life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may have kept in camp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inspire in his temple. Amen. I have read in your hearing verses 1 through 4, the previous announced chapter. May the Lord have a blessing to his word. Yes. Amen. Yes.
things, other things, or look at other things, or whatever, that this is, that you are truly with us each and every day, and we know the devil is there too, and we pray that we allow you, and as I said before, the Holy Spirit to dwell in us as we can shun away from this stuff, and let, not let the devil win, and we can always have the strength to fight the good fight for you each and every day. Amen. Dear Lord, I pray that you will be with uh, Brother Booker today uh, as uh, he um, has prepared for this lesson. Sister Booker, I know, helps him. I pray that you will be with him. And as he presents this lesson, that um, out of your inspired word, that we will share, that we will take this lesson, take it to heart, and share this lesson with everyone we come in contact with. However it may be, whether it's a person, on the phone, computer, wherever it may be, I pray that we share these inspired words from you. Yes. I ask this prayer in your son's name. Amen. 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 All right, let's sing uh, 173, He's My King, and Oh, I Dearly Love Him. He's my king. All day long, oh Jesus, I am singing. He's my song, a joy will never be. Well, and all the while, he keeps my heart bells ringing and for.
And now he wants us to know him. So how can I know him who is unsearchable? Because see, when I stop and kind of think about God, I think about what Paul says in Philippians 3 and verse number 10. And I'm reading this from the Amplified Bible. The verse says, Lord, may I determine purpose be to know you, to progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with you, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of your person yes, more strongly and more deeply. I just want to get to know him. I want to get to know as much as I possibly can about him. But if he's unsearchable, how can I search the unsearchable? Well, we want to talk about that this morning. How can I get to know him better? Because God expects us to know him. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 6 and verse 9 is that our God is the everlasting Father. Psalm 46, 7, he said, the God, he is the God of hosts. Psalm 146, 6 said, he's the Lord of heaven and he's the Lord of earth. Hebrews 12, verse number 2 tells us that he is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. In the book of St. Corinthians, Chapter 1 and verse number 3, he talks about he is the God of all comfort. Isaiah 6 and verse 9 say that he is our counselor. But then again, I read in Genesis 1 and verse number 1 that God is the creator. Exodus chapter 16, 15 and verse number 26 talks about he is the great physician. And then in 1 Peter 5, and the verse in number 10, he's the God of all grace. And then when I turn to Exodus chapter 3 and verse 4, he said that he is the I am God. Then when I turn to Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13, he is the Alpha and he is the Omega. Psalms 89. And verse number 16, he is the Holy One of Israel. Then in Psalms 83, verse 16, he is Jehovah. Yeah. He's the Most High. But then I turn to Romans chapter 14 and verse number 6. He said the Lord is the Lord of the living and he's the Lord of, of the dead. Matter of fact, he is the maker. He is the mediator. He is the man of sorrow. He is our prophet. He is our priest. And he is our king. He is our redeemer. He's our refuge. He's our rock. He's the ruler of heaven and earth. He is the free and of sinners. Now when I stop and look at all the things that God is, how can I search the uns? Searchable God. How can I really get to know God? And how can I get to know Him for who He really is? See, trying, trying to comprehend the person of God is like trying to capture all of the galaxies of the universe in the palm of your hand. It's hard. But God expects us to seek Him. He expects us to search after Him. Even though He may be unsearchable, God still expects us to search after Him. Yeah. I just want to get to know Him. And I want to get to know Him better. The psalmist says, and 
Psalm 37 and verse number 3. It said, trust yes. in the Lord and do good. Yes, Dwell in the land and feed <laughs> on his righteousness. Feed on his righteousness. Some let me be asked the question, what does it mean to feed on his righteousness? How do I feed? How do I feast on the righteousness of God? What does that mean? Well, what it means is this. It actually means that I am going to feed on him. I'm going to feed on his goodness. I'm going to feed on his mercy. I'm going to feed on his power. I'm going to feed on his presence. I'm going to feed on his promises. I'm going to feed on his love. And guess what? Out of all of the endless and infinite attributes and the realities and qualities of God, it means I'm going to feed on Jesus. Yeah. Which is the prayer yeah. of life. So I'm just going to feed on him. I'm going to feed on his faithfulness. I'm, I'm going to spend some time in his word. And my prayer this morning is that you will get to know him better. That you'll get to know him I get to know him. I said over and over again that we have to spend some time with him. The only way you're going to get to know people as Brother Johnson said in Sunday school this morning we, we got to spend some time. We, we got to be around some folk. I enjoyed the fellowship that I saw here this morning. I mean it was hard for us to even get started. With worship. You know, I'm one of those, I don't care if we didn't start at 11 15, 11 30, as long as you guys were talking and communicating and hugging and fellowshipping and coming near. Actually, that's what it's about. It's not about you starting at exactly 11 and exactly three songs and hear a scripture of prayer. That's really not what it's really all about. What it's about is, is what I saw from 11. From 10 minutes to 11 to right up to 11 o'clock. Now I know why we had to start. Because if you ever went back and watched our lessons on Facebook, they have a countdown. And that countdown says our worship would start in 10, I think it starts around 10 minutes and it starts counting down. And when it counts down, it's right at 11. And when 11 o'clock comes, it's time for us to go live. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. But I also like that function. I just wish folks that was on Facebook could, could see what I saw and experienced this morning. That how you guys were just together and showing each other's company. Yeah. Yeah. Getting to know one another. Spending that quality time with each other. That's what it's really all about. It's about us coming together and kind of living one with another. And when we don't do that, we miss something. We miss that coming together. That's, that's why I tell folks, you, you ought to be here because you can experience what we experienced this morning at home. You can't do it. Yeah, you can hear the message. Yeah, you may be able to look, but, but there's something you still missing. And that's that camaraderie, that coming together. So we got to get to know God is what I'm saying. In the book of John, the chapter 17 and the verses 3, yes, sir. the Bible said this, this is eternal life that you may know that you may know the only true God of Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Knowing implies growing. 
Knowing implies growing. That you are going to continue to grow in Him. As long as you don't know Him, you're not going to grow in Him. Even Peter, the second book of Peter, it only consists of three chapters. But in those three chapters, Peter makes mention of the word knowledge. I know him at least seven times. So knowing and knowledge was important to Peter. Matter of fact, he says here in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 2, he tells us that grace and peace be multiplied unto you in the knowledge of God. Then he goes on to say in 2 Peter in chapter 1 and verse number 3 yes, is that, that his divine power yes, has given us everything or all things that pertain to life yes, and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us. And then he says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verses 5 and 6 he told us to to our virtue, knowledge. Yes, yes. And to knowledge, he says, you add self control. But then he goes on to say, yes, in the book of Second Peter 1 and verse number 8, yes. he says, For if these things are yours and abound, you are neither be what? Yes. Unbearing nor unfruitful in the what? In the knowledge. Our Lord. So then Peter finally winds up saying in 2 Peter 3 and verse number 18, he tells us in that passage that we need to grow. We need to grow in grace and we need to grow in knowledge. There comes a time, church, that we need to be growing. Growing in our knowledge. You ought to know more today about the God that you serve than you did five years ago or ten years ago. You ought to be growing in the knowledge of Him. Now I hate to beat a dead horse. And I hate to ride a horse till he just dropped dead. But I got to say. Because I love you. And I'm concerned. I've got to say. I don't see how. You can. Continue. To neglect. Bible study. And expect to grow. In knowledge. Now I'm saying that with all the love and all. Looks to me like. If you want to grow. You, you want to be where. Teaching and growth and knowledge is taking place. You want to be that. I mean, I still like to grow. Even though I study on my own, I still like to go. I, I still like to go to places that being taught, that the word is being taught. And a lectureship and a seminar that I can find, I try to go there so that I can learn more and more and more about the Lord. See, I want to continue to grow. Even though I've been married over 40 years, guess what? I still like to go to retreats. Matter of fact, my wife and I will be going to one in a couple of weeks. We'll be going to a marriage retreat. Why do you need to go to a marriage retreat? Because I still want to grow. I still want to grow. There's a lot I don't know yet. So I want to grow. There's a lot about this book I don't know yet. So I still want to grow. I want to sit and I want to listen. I want to learn more about God. I really want to get to know Him. And the more I can sit at someone else's feet, the more I learn about Him. I'll be spending a week, about four days, 
in Knoxville in a couple of months at the Southeast Biblical School of Studies. I'll be speaking on that next year, but, but I'm going to stick around and, because I want to know more about God. I want to attend every session I can. Not only did I got to speak one night, but, but, but I want to know. Tell me something I don't know. I want to know more and more about it. We sing that song. More about him. I want to learn. More of his will. I just want to discern. My question to you really want to know him. Do you want to know him this morning? Do you want to know everything you possibly can about him? So let's go back to our original scripture. For my determined purpose is that I may know him. That I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. Perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person and more strongly and clearly. I just want to get to know him. My determined purpose and I hope that's your determined purpose that you just want to get to know him. That you progressively become more deeply in other words, you, you're going to search out that you're going to continue to do it progressively. You're not going to get to the point that where you think you know it all. Amen. And nobody can tell you anything. Amen. But you need to progressively, every day, continue to seek his word and to learn his word. Because you never get to know it all. Amen. You don't never get to and I don't care how long you've been in the church. I don't care how many degrees you got behind your name. You still don't know it all. And you'll never know it all. I told the class on Wednesday night. Brother Wayne came up to me last Sunday. And I hate to put you on the spot, Wayne. But Wayne came up to me last Sunday. And he asked me a question. He said, Brother Booker, let me ask you something. I said, yeah. Because he, he follows me on Wednesday night Bible class. And he said, why is it that Melchizedek is spelled one way in the Old Testament and spelled differently in the New Testament? I said, I don't know. You sure about that? <laughs> so he said, yeah. And he opened his Bible up right at the back of it. As many times that I have been over, I have taught the book of Hebrews, I have taught about Melchizedek for years, but I never noticed that the difference in the spelling from the book of Genesis and the book of Psalm was different than it was in Hebrews. Never picked that up before. So guess what? I ain't got beyond learning. I said, thank you for sharing that with me. Why was it? They are different that I had to come back and tell Because one is Hebrew. And the Hebrew in Aramaic. And the other one is Greek. It's better. But I never considered it. All of us can learn something. So I hope it's your determined purpose that you want to get to know him. Amen. That you want to progressively yes, become more deeply yeah. and intimately acquainted with him. Amen. Perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonder.
wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. I hope that's your dream. I hope that's your goal. I hope that's your desire. Someone has said, and I quote, you can only worship someone we love. And we can only love someone we know. You can only worship someone you love. And you can only love someone you know. Do you know him? Y'all, I think, I, I know you may say I love him. I love God, but, but do you know him? Not know about him, but know him. Do you know him? Have you spent time with him so that you can know him? Let me leave you with three points. You know, I like to leave you with points. Let me leave you with three points this morning. Three important questions that I want you to ask yourself after this lesson this morning. Number one is knowing God. Your determined purpose and priority. Is that the number one thing in your life? Or is it work? Is it money? Is it car? Is it houses? Is it family? What is the number one priority in your life? Is it to know him and know him better? I just want to know him. So in order to know him, I'm going to have to spend some time with him. And I'm going to spend time in his word. Not just pick it up on Sunday mornings. But I'm going to spend time with him throughout the week. You know what I've learned? And Brother Walls can testify to this. Is that the more you read and the more you study. The more you understand about God. The more you find out. You don't know about God. So spend time. So question number one is knowing God your determined purpose and point. Number two, are you progressively becoming more deeply and intimately acquainted with him? Is that, is that true of you? You are becoming more deeply and intimately with him. Now how do I do that? I do that by spending time with him. And then number three, are you growing daily? Growing daily in your understanding of the wonders of his person. Not just on Sundays, but are you growing daily this question is, in your understanding. Because see, even though he may be unsearchable, I can still seek after him. Yeah. I'm searching for him. Yeah. I know he's high and lifted up. I know with my finite mind I cannot grab the infinite God. Just get to know him. 
So if that's your prayer this morning, join with me as we pray together. Father, we thank you for the lesson this morning. Father, we just pray that every one of us would just get to know you better. Oh, Father, we know about you. We have heard about you. We have saw the miracles that you have performed. We, we, we have seen everything that you have done. We have heard about the places you have created and all the things that you have made. We, we, we heard about all of that. But Father, there's still a vacuum in our lives. Father, even though we may have heard a lot about you, but, but we haven't really experienced a lot. Father, we just want to experience you. We just want you to be real in our lives. We want to be able to sing the song and sing it with, with, with such virtue that I know my God is real. Oh, see, I feel it. I have experienced it. And Father, I pray this morning that all of us will leave here this morning getting to know you and know you more intimately, deeply, strongly, and clearly is our prayer. And Father, we thank you for what your word is going to teach us. And we ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if you are here, and you're not part of the family of God, let me encourage you to come. If you are here and you've fallen by the wayside, let me encourage you to come back to him so that you can have that intimate relationship with him. And if you're not part of the body, please come. Jesus is calling. He's knocking at the heart. The door of your heart. And he's asked you to come in. He wants to sup with you. But you have to invite him in. Will you, encourage, will you be encouraged enough? This morning said, Lord, I want to give my life to you. I want to render obedience unto your word. You can do that if you will and repent of your sin. Be willing to confess him for this audience because if you're not willing to confess him, he's not going to confess you. Yeah. Matter of fact, the Bible says if you deny him, he will also deny you. And I don't think you want to appear and he deny you. But it's possible. But if you come to him, give your life to him, Become his child. Guess what? You will never have to hear him say, depart from me. Live a life that is pleasing in his sight. If you're falling by the wayside, you know you haven't been all that you should have been. And none of us have. But if you have put the church to an open shame, you know that. Why not just say, Lord, forgive me. And guess what he'll do? He'll forgive you. Why? Because he's faithful and he just and he's willing to forgive us. The problem is not God forgiving us. The problem so many times is we forgiving ourselves. And as I said on last week, the problem is not the rocks that other folks throw. The problem is the rocks we throw at ourselves. I pray this morning that you understand God forgives. He casts your sin as far as from the east, from the west, and he casts them into the sea, the deepest part. And he won't bring them up again. I pray that you allow him to do that this morning. We are going to sing a verse of a song. This song is to encourage you to come back to Jesus. Or to come to Jesus. Whatever the situation is, why not do it right now? And we together stand and sing. Jesus, oh Jesus, how I love, how I love to go.
We are made to know God. And we need to know as much about Him as we possibly can. For God made us to know Him. To have a relationship with Him. May you get to know Him. May you get to know Him even better. This time we want to continue on with our services as Brother Luper takes charge of our giving in the Lord's Supper at this time. You have long yes, to welcome everyone to the Versus Church of Christ. We welcome all that are in person today and for the ones that have joined us online and by the phone. We also welcome any guests that we may have with us today. We want you to know that you are our honored guest and we welcome you to the Verse Street Church of Christ. I have a few announcements today that I will go through. 
Uh, first of all, we want to continue to recognize and celebrate our African American Heritage Month, as I noted last Sunday, uh, as we continue on uh, throughout this month. I was able to pull up one of our uh, programs of the past, and it was entitled Bridging the Generations. It was one of our programs we had here in, in, in the past, and I said I would highlight a few of the things over time uh, in regards to this congregation here. And one of the questions that, I don't know if she remembers that she's not here today, but it was asked by Natasha. Uh, the question was, how, I would like to know how Burry Street Church of Christ got started and come to be. And the answer that was provided, it said the original church location was located on North Main Street, formerly known as the Colored Church of Christ, the large building where congregation worship was purchased from J.F. Boyd on August the 22nd of 1914 with the minister as Brother Bonnie Mathis. Then the congregation worshiped at North Main Street location for many years, and the church building was sold on April the 7th, 1952, due to floodwaters and lack of space and parking, age of the building, etc. So as a lot was purchased, as you all may know over time, uh, from L.L. L. Edward on East Cedar Street. And then later uh, from there, the brethren employed contractors at the time, Thomas Cartwright, to construct the building and a new location became known as East Cedar Street Church of Christ. And the congregation worshiped there for 30 plus years until the existing building that you are sitting in on today. So I just wanted to highlight that and we'll continue to share things as we celebrate uh, this month. And this, again, is from the theme they had of that year, Bridging the Generations, uh, was one of the themes that we have here uh, in celebrating and remembering our own. Do not forget, this is a new announcement I uh, announced last Sunday. The Black History Coffee will be hosted by the Shelbyville and Vicinity NAMPBW Club and the Rosenwald Recreation Community Center. It will be on February the 24th at uh, 9.30 a.m. So it is open to the public. All are encouraged and invited to attend. One other announcement that I have here in front of me, uh, Sister Dora Bonner sent a card in and wanted to say thank you all for the kindness and hospitality shown to her and the Howard McCrossy, McCrossy family during the loss of Brother Howard. So we want to uh, recognize that this morning. Sister Dora did call this morning and we, she asked us to continue to pray for her. The other announcement, I have a youth spotlight here. Yeah. Want to recognize, uh, if I can say the name right, I can try. Elena and Malaya Starnes, they both received an A and B honor roll. Now in the picture here, this is a, a line, Elena. Uh, she is the daughter of Camille Biggers and the granddaughter of Carmen Biggers. So I want to say congratulations to them for, for those two young ladies for A and B honor roll. Again, we appreciate our young ladies and young men doing great in school. Uh, and I, if they, I know they're listening, so I apologize if I said the name wrong. So I know that was done with good intention. Amen. The other announcement is, do not forget, we are accepting donations for our back to school giveaway. Uh, I do appreciate it. Some of you have already started handing money into me, and that's a good thing. So uh, there's a box out front. Continue to bring those supplies in. July will be here before we know it. And as we all know, we have increased in numbers every year for the ones we have in this community. So continue now between now and July to bring those things in. You can also give any cash, check, or go online. But that all that money will be, as I say, every year for our Back to School uh, giveaway. So just want to keep that, reminding folks of that. Do not forget, another scholarship opportunity was submitted this week. So if you've got any seniors, Seniors do listen up, or anyone knows a senior graduating. Uh, this is another announcement that was shared with me uh, as one of the area youth counselors. This one to the right, this is the, and I'll read it in front of me actually. This is the Captain Luther J. Hunter Jr. And they asked us to share with our congregations. Uh, it said, This is a $1,000 Memorial Foundation scholarship for male and female graduating high school seniors. And the theme is save our children one by one. So I have the application here with information that is needed, uh, that they have what the requirements are. So if you got anybody you know of 
get that turned in. And as I've been announcing also, do not forget the NAMPBW and the Shelby Facility Club also has an application. So young folks, I encourage you to take advantage of these things. If you know somebody that uh, can use these, do that. And if you want to know more information about what the application requirements are, I have them here from the one that was submitted to me uh, from the area youth councils in this area. So they asked that I could share that today. So keep that in mind. I, I'll just read to you briefly what some of the requirements of uh, this is, this new one. It is a 500 word or less uh, on how the scholarship will assist you in achieving your goals. Your applicants must have a current uh, school transparent transcript rather, sorry, for a GPA at at least 2.75. And then there's some other things that highlight it. Applicants must provide two letters of recommendation, et cetera. So I know our young folks are capable of getting these things together. So encourage them if you know someone that can benefit from these scholarships. Every penny helps. Amen. Amen. All right, do not forget our cook ministry. They will be meeting on March 11th at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Also, I understand our sisters have been busy. This is actually some work of Sister Martha Anderson. Uh, she is doing uh, some great work. We appreciate her. These are the quilt tops that are going to the local council ministry here in town who help the homeless and they also provide a warming center. So we appreciate Sister Martha Anderson and the other ladies that are working in the quilt ministry here at the Bird Street Congregation. Just to show you, there's a variety of ways that you can kind of plug in and into a ministry that maybe meets your needs. Uh, do not forget the church directory is due today. Is that right? And today is today. So if you do not have your information card filled out, please get those turned in today. The other announcement, I have several announcements. I appreciate you guys being patient this morning before I go to the next one. The next announcement, this is to the Bird Street Church of Christ and Brother Anthony Booker. It says, on behalf of the Gilligan Historical Resource Center, we express our most sincere appreciation for the monetary contribution you have made to our center in preparation for Dr. Martin Luther King Day Luncheon. Your contribution helped us feed more than 100 and 20 people in our community. Thank you for showing concern for your community and the uh, preservation of African American history and culture. Thank you again for your meaningful support. Sincerely, Albert Nelson, President, and Rosie Biggs, Secretary. And they got P.S. Thank you so much for your participation and service to the community whenever asked. Blessing in Jesus' name. So that was turned in as well. The next announcement is again a reminder of our jail ministry. The training will be on February the 18th at 8 a.m. So again, you have to attend these trainings in order to participate in the jail ministry. Ladies, do not forget, Ladies Day will be on July the 8th. Again, mark your calendar. More details to come. Ladies, get excited about your latest day. So uh, invite someone to come with you. And also, we're speaking of ladies, our sisters ministry continue to uh, have their devotion and prayer call on Tuesday, 11 a.m. and on Thursdays. Our coming week, we have our devotion and prayer call at 7 p.m. Who's our speaker? Actually, it's Brother Ronnie, right? Because he didn't, he wasn't on last week. He got on late, actually, to, to begin and be fair. He got on late, um, and, but he will be doing it this week. Brother Booker did it this past week, so tune in if your schedule allows for our devotion and prayer call. Do not forget our Wednesday night dinner. Continue on with no, shall do with that. Boy, these words this morning. Uh, Brother Book will continue to dive in God's word on that. There was one more announcement. I don't see the slide. Uh, it was about the order uh, for the t-shirt. Sister Tanya Chun is doing uh, our t-shirts as we've announced several times for our theme this year. She already has t-shirts pre-made. And so what that means, if you can get a t-shirt, but you do need to give your money. So turn that in to Brother Chun or Sister Ira, and they'll be sure to get that. So if you take a t-shirt, be honest, right, and, and pay your money. So uh, those t-shirts are out front if you like one for the theme for this year. Those are all the announcements that I'm aware of. Any other? All right. Again, it's good to be with you all today. We trust and pray that each of you have a good week, and God may watch over all of you. Praise God. Amen. And may this good.
good. I just just sitting here, you know, my back is you face this way, you, you can't do and back, but uh, I got up and come up here to do the, the closing. I just look at like you know, all this and it's just I mean it's just a blessing to see so many people come today to hear God's word. And I hope it continues to, to grow. And you know, see it full, and we have to pull out the chairs and even sit to people. So don't get too comfortable. I know we were we were talking on Saturday that you know during this pandemic, you know, and you know, you can see us uh, on live and all this right here. But it's better to see you here live, and man, and continue to the fellowship of one to another. And that's how we grow, learn from one another. You know, and so. As long as we continue to do that, we are pleasing God. Amen. Amen. And that's what I like to do. I just like to please God Amen. any way that I can. Yes. Let us pray. More gracious and more heavenly Father, we come to you again. Humble that we know how. As we close out the day, Father God, but we're not going to close out on you. Amen. We will continue, Father God, to fellowship with you, continue to know you, Father God, for our presence of our sins, Father God. Father God, we, just, we know sometimes we fall short. But Father God, we're going to continue to press on for you, Father God. But as we leave this place, Father God, but not your presence, you continue to keep us under your wings, Father God. Yes. And Father God, look upon the ones, Father God, that's in the sick and shut in. Yes. It's not able to be here with us today for whatever reason. It could be sickness, strength, or whatever it is, Father God. You know them all, Father God. And Father God, continue to just bless them. And Father God, just keep them lifted up. And we do it asking all these things. In your daughter, son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 As Brother Randy comes, I have one more announcement I forgot. Uh, there are some free socks in the back on the table. Some free socks. If you need any free socks, get what's left. I'll see some people you know, already get some this morning. There are some free socks in the back on this table in the kitchen.